Good morning. morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett televising another week of the <clears throat> Neurosurgical Anatomy Series uh, instituted by uh, uh, Ulrich Sidney, who's yeah. going to host today. And let me just turn the show over to, Dil uh, to Ulrich. Okay, Ulrich, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much, John. Um, uh, it's a tradition in neurosurgical TV. Before we start the presentations, we start by presenting ourselves. So um, let's start with Dr. Marco. Please, can you present yourself? Hi, hello everybody. Thanks, uh, Ulrich. Uh, my name is Marco Meloni. I'm a consultant neurosurgeon and I work in uh, Gravedona, North Italy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Marco. Dr. Zolo. Uh, good morning to everybody. I'm not yet a doctor. <laughs> I'm a Zulu, a senior medical student from the University of Boya. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice, ni nice meeting you, um, Dr. Okay. Stefan. 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 Hi everyone. I'm, yep. Hi everyone. I'm Stefan Gembu, final medicine student in Cameroon. Okay. Nice and you all. Thank you very much, Stefan, and uh, Dr. Natalie. Hello everyone, I'm Natalie. Uh, I'm a medical doctor, general practitioner. I'm also a member of AFEN. Mm. Thanks very much. Dr. Douala, Dr. Arnaud. Hi to everybody, Dr. Douala Arnaud, first year neurosurgical resident in Cameroon. Okay, um, I'm, I'm the last to go. So I'm Auric Sydney, final year medical student and future research associate at the Harvard's program in global surgery. Um, I'll be your host for today. So we'll be presenting the 10th the, the uh, presentation in a series. So we're working on venous drainage today, presented by Jofak um, Dylan. So Dylan, you have the floor. Okay. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Dylan Jofak, seventh year medical student from Cameroon and member of the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons. So today we are going to talk about the venous, venous drainage of the brain, but we are going to be more, more focused on the supratentorial part of the venous drainage. So So this is like we were saying, John, uh, you can always count on the technologies to, to let you down. So, yeah, um, obviously, since uh, Dylan is using uh, Dr. Arnold's uh, uh, device, I guess he's not very versed with it. So we have to be patient here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll just, I'm going to stop the recording right now. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Okay, so we are going to talk about the surgical anatomy of the venous drainage. So in order to reach our, our day's goal, we are going to have a brief introduction. We're going to talk about the organization of the venous drainage in the brain, precisely focused on the supratentorial part of the venous drainage. We're going to talk about the surgical anatomy of the supratentorial drainage of the brain. We are going to see a little bit of clinical relevance linked to this venous drainage. And we are going to end with a brief uh, a review of surgical approach linked to some uh, pathologies of this venous drainage system. So it is, as an introduction, we are going to say that um, the veins of the supratentorial regions are these vessels that permit the drainage of the blood from the, the, the cerebral tissue. Precisely, this uh, venous drainage system is intimately linked to the resorption of the, the cerebrospinal fluid precisely through the, the venous sinuses. So, getting directly into the point, the venous drainage or the, 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 blood, the venous blood vessels of the brain are organized into supratentorial blood vessels and then an infratentorial blood vessels. In the supratentorial portion, we can find the superficial cortical veins, the dural sinuses, 
and veins, the meningeal veins, and then the deep veins. So for today, we're going to focus mostly on the supratentorial part of the, the venous drainage system. In this supratentorial part, we are going to start by the superficial venous system. So in this superficial venous system, the, the venous blood vessels are organized such that we have cortical veins, which are divided into groups depending on whether these cortical veins cause on the medial, lateral, or, or inferior part of the cerebral hemispheres and are organized as either ascending, descending, lateral, medial, or inferior cortical venous groups. And then further, these cortical veins are organized according to the lobes and the hemispheres into frontal veins, parietal veins, temporal veins, occipital veins. From these cortical veins, we have the bridging veins. So as these veins leave the, 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 the cortex, they go through the different layers, the different coverings of the cerebral hemisphere. So uh, progressively going through the pia mater, mater, then to the subarachnoid space, crossing the arachnoid layer, and then the, the, the dura layer to, to be drained by the dura sinuses. So, at the level of the bridging veins, we have four draining groups. We have the superior sagittal group, the sphenoidal group, the tentorial group, the falcine group. And then all of these bridging veins will finally drain into the dura sinuses, which are superior and inferior sagittal sinuses, the straight sinus, transverse sinus, tentorial sinus, the cavernous sinus, the sphenoparietal, sphenobasal, and sphenopetrosal sinuses. So here we have an image that depicts the passage of the cortical veins. So here we see the brain parenchyma here with the different meningeal layers. Here we have the pia mater, here we have the arachnoid layer, and here we have the dura mater in which we have the dura sinuses. So as we see the cortical veins will leave from here, bridging veins crossing through this different meningeal layers and then finally drain into these sinuses. And here precisely we are talking about the superior sagittal sinus here. So further here we can see, here we can see an image that depicts the superior, the superior sagittal sinuses. It demonstrates the frontal veins here, anterior frontal veins, the medial frontal vein, we have the superior sagittal sinus, and then we have the venous lacunae beside the superior sagittal sinus. We have the posterior frontal vein. We have the central vein, the post-central vein, and then the anterior parietal vein. All this to show a little bit of disposition of these veins at the level of the cortical surface. So talking about still this superficial draining system, we have Amongst these cortical veins, we have the frontal lobe veins, which are divided into three groups. We have the lateral frontal veins. Here we can see the lateral surface of the brain. We have the lateral frontal veins, which are divided into two groups. The ascending group, which will drain into the, super, in the, into the superior sagittal sinus, and the descending group, which will, which will join the superficial sylvian veins here. So as here we can see in blue, we see the, the veins of the frontal region, precisely the lateral frontal veins. We see the frontal polar vein, anterior frontal vein, the mid frontal vein, the posterior frontal vein, precentral vein, which are part of the lateral frontal veins. The second group, here we still see an image, sorry, we see an image here, precisely showing the anterior view of the frontal lobe here. Here we have the frontal lobe. Here we have the frontal lobes. And then we see the veins of the lateral surface of the frontal lobe. So the posterior frontal vein, the mid frontal vein, the anterior frontal vein on each side, as well as here. So this anatomy is important because as we saw last time in the different surgical approaches that are going to target different subcortical structures, venous structures are generally to be sacrificed during surgical procedures. But care has to be taken because these venous structures have a key role to play at the level of the drainage. And injury to these uh, blood vessels can lead to 
to uh, venous infarction and then severe neurological deficit. So in case we have surgical approaches, for example, transcortical frontal surgical approaches, care has to be taken at, this, at the level of these venous structures. Even though some of these venous structures are going to be sacrificed, the, the, the extent to which the ligation or the sacrifice of these vessels has to, go, has to be limited because of the neurological deficits and the, the venous infra infarction that can be linked to, to, to a great damage of these blood vessels. So going further, we, we see still at the level of the frontal lobe veins, we have the medial frontal veins, those veins that cause at the level of the medial surface of the frontal lobe. So they are divided into two. We have the ascending group, which drain into the superior sagittal sinus, and the descending group, which drain into the inferior sagittal sinus. So here we can see the medial surface of the frontal lobe. On this medial surface, we see here as well, we see the regions of this medial surface that are drained by the respective venous vessels. So here we see part of the vessels of the medial frontal veins. We have the posterior medial frontal vein. We have the central medial frontal, frontal vein. We have the anterior precentral vein. And these vessels are important as well as we were talking about the, the, the surgical procedures targeting the subcortical structures. As we see here, we are not very far from the cingulate gyrus, an important gyrus that's part of the, of the limbic system. So all of these vascular structures are important during surgical approaches. Further, we have the blood vessels, the venous blood vessels that go through the inferior portion of the frontal lobe. So they drain the inferior, the cortical inferior portal portion of the frontal lobe. And they are divided into two. We have the anterior group, which drains into the superior sagittal sinus, which we'll see later. And then the posterior group, which, which drains into the medial sylvian fissure veins, which later would drain into the basal vein of Rosenthal. So here we can see, here we can see the inferior surface, the orbicular surface of the frontal lobe, and then we see the blood vessels with the regions that are, that are drained by the respective blood vessels, be the anterior frontal orbital vein or the frontopolar vein. All of these vein structures drain the inferior portion of the, of the frontal lobe and are part of the inferior frontal veins. So going to the parietal lobe, they too, the veins that drain the cortical part of the parietal lobe are divided into lateral parietal veins, themselves divided into ascending group, which drains into the superior sagittal sinus, and a descending group, which drains into the sylvian fissure veins here. So here still we see a view, a lateral view of the lateral surface of the parietal lobe. And then we can see the different veins with precision on the portion of the, of the the parietal cortex that's drained by each respective veins here, as we can see. So we can see the postcentral vein, the level of the postcentral uh, 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 gyrus. We have the, the posterior parietal vein, the anterior parietal vein, which are, which are both part of this lateral parietal veins. Still at the level of the parietal veins, we have the medial parietal veins divided into ascending group which drain at the level of the superior sagittal sinus, knowing that the superior sagittal sinus is that venous sinus that causes at the level of the midline, so just above here, the level of the midline here. So this ascending group of the medial parietal veins will drain into this superior sagittal sinus, and then the descending group will drain in the vein of Galen or its tributaries. So here we see the medial surface of the parietal lobe, with the various venous structures that pass here, and then the portion, preci the precise portion of the venous, of the, of the parietal cortex that's drained by these different venous structures. Going to the temporal lobe, we have, uh, uh, they are divided to, into, depending on whether the venous structures cause at the level of the lateral surface of the temporal lobe, and then drain this lateral surface, 
or the, the, the inferior surface of the temporal lobe. So we have the lateral temporal veins divided into ascending group and descending group. The ascending group will drain into the sylvian fissure veins and then the descending group into the infratemporal venous sinuses, which are not well seen here. So here we have the lateral surface of the temporal lobe. Our various venous structures. We have the superior sylvian vein here, which is part of those veins into which the ascending group are going to drain in the sylvian, uh, part of the sylvian fissure veins. So here we have the inferior temporal veins divided into two groups. We have the lateral group, which drains into the anterior lateral tentorial sinus, and then the medial group, which drains into the basal vein of Rosenthal. Talking about the occipital lobe veins, we have the lateral occipital veins, which are those posterior veins, which are represented by those posterior veins of the parietal and temporal lobe, which are going to drain the anterior portion of the occipital lobe. And then we have the medial occipital veins, which concern the anterior and posterior calcaran veins. And then we have the inferior occipital veins, which are occipital basal veins, and then the lateral tentorial veins. Sign which drain into the lateral tentorial sinus. So we have to note that the largest routes of drainage on the lateral surface of the cerebral cortex are the veins of Trollard and Labay, and then the superficial sylvian veins. So during surgical procedures, especially as the veins of Trollard and Labay are those veins that permit anastomosis between the superior superficial cortical veins and then the inferior superficial cortical veins. So Next, from the superficial cortical draining system, we have the meningeal veins. These small venous channels accompanying the meningeal arteries, which cause between the meningeal arteries and the overlying bone. So they have, an, they, they, when looked at, at the level of the um, radiology or, or, or scanographically, they, they seem to be compressed because they cause between the meningeal arteries and then and the overlying bone. So they are pressed by these meningeal arteries on the, uh, on the overlying bone. The largest ones of these meningeal veins are those accompanying the meningeal arteries. And these meningeal veins receive blood from the diploid veins and uh, which themselves originate from the calvaria, the, 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 the part of the skull, superior part of the skull. And these meningeal veins drain into the large dural sinuses at the level of the cranial base and the venous lacunae and superior sagittal sinuses at the, their upper margin. So here we see a representation of this meningeal sinuses with the middle meningeal artery here. So they're really between the overlying bone and the meningeal artery and the, yes the meningeal artery and so they permit uh, they receive blood from these diploid veins and then uh, they drain into the various structures the various venous structures so from these cortical veins with the meningeal veins we have the bridging veins which permit to retrieve the blood from the cortical veins and secondarily would drain into the dura sinuses. So talking about these bridging veins, we have four draining groups. We have the superior sagittal group, as we said, the sphenoidal group, the tentorial group, and the falcine group. So the superior sagittal group is composed of those veins which drain into the superior sagittal sinus, which this is, either directly or through the meningeal sinuses. So they include the, the, the medial, the veins of the medial and lateral surfaces of the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe, and the anterior part of the orbital surface of the frontal lobe, which is seen on the inferior part of the frontal, of the frontal lobe. We have the sphenoidal group, which is composed of the bridging veins draining into the sinuses in the inner surface of the sphenoid bone, or the cavernous sinus, that sinus located on both sides of the, the sphenoidal bone, and it is formed by terminal ends of the superficial sylvian and occasionally the deep sylvian veins. So it drains part of the frontal, temporal, and parietal lobe and itself drains into the sphenoparietal or the cavernous sinus. We have the falcine group, those group of veins which 
drain into the inferior sagittal or the straight sinus, and they permit the drainage of the limbic system. So they include the paraterminal, they, they, they include the veins that drain the paraterminal and the paraolfactory gyri, the anterior part of the cingulate gyrus and the corpus callosum, the posterior cingulate gyrus, and the medial part of the parahippocampal gyrus and the uncus. We have the tentoral group, those veins that drain into the lateral surface, that drain the lateral surface of the temporal bone and the basal surface of the temporal and occipital bones. They cause at the level of the, the tentorium cerebelli and they include the temporal basal vein, the occipital basal vein, and the descending veins, including the vein of labe. So these veins drain into the tentorial sinuses or the, tr the transverse and superior petrosal sinuses at the level of the, the terminal margins. We have from these bridging, these four draining groups of bridging veins, we have the dural sinuses and veins, which are the terminal portions of this superficial draining system. So these dural sinuses receive the veins from the superficial and deep venous systems. And these dural sinuses concerned include the superior and inferior sagittal sinus, the straight sinus. Let me see, we have the superior sagittal sinus as well as the inferior sagittal sinus right here. We have the straight sinus. We have the tentorial sinuses on both sides. We have the cavernous sinus, the sinus located on both sides of the sphenoidal body. And then we have the superior and inferior petrosal sinuses. Here we have the superior petrosal sinuses, but the inferior petrosal sinus is not well seen here. Superior petrosal sinus, sorry. The inferior petrosal sinuses are not well seen. So talking about the superior sagittal sinus, it begins behind the frontal sinus. So just ahead here and causes midline as it grows larger posteriorly. It drains into the transverse sinus, mainly the right transverse sinus, at the level of the occipital protuberance through a confluent of venous, a, a confluent venous complex called the torcula herophily. So the torcula herophily is this structure here, which is a confluence of the superior sagittal sinus the transverse sinuses, and it drains the blood from the superior sagittal sinus precisely as it goes into the right transverse sinus. So this superior sagittal sinus drains the anterior inferior surface of the frontal lobe, the superolateral and superomedial parts of the frontal, temporal, and parietal lobes. So here we have representation of this superior sagittal sinus that causes at the, at the midline, at the, the interhemispheric fissure here, draining blood from the anterior inferior portion of the frontal lobe and ending at the level of the torcular herophily. So besides here, we see the, the, the lacunae, the venous lacunae, that are found either on both sides of the, the superior sagittal sinus here. And then the venous structures that are drained by this superior sagittal sinus reach the superior sagittal sinus at certain precise angles. So we have the frontopolar vein at the level of the frontal lobe, uh, which is part of the the, 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 the group of lateral veins of the frontal lobe, which arrives at the level of this superior sagittal sinus at the 110 degrees. The anterior frontal vein still at 110 degrees. We have 85 degrees for the mid frontal vein. We have 65 degrees for the posterior frontal vein, 50 degrees for the precentral vein, and um, postcentral vein, which has 40 degrees. And then the, the occipital vein, 10 degrees to the superior sagittal sinus. When we perform a, a frontal cut of this superior sagittal sinus, we realize that actually it presents right and left angles on both sides at its junction with the dura mater. 
here is the dura mater, right and left angles. And then we have an inferior angle at its junction with the Fox cerebri here. So when we uh, perform a, a, a CT scan, for example, when we're talking about the delta sign in, uh, in a superior sagittal sign of thrombosis, it is a, a representation of this, this, this aspect of the, the superior sagittal sinus. Then still talking about the superior sagittal sinus, we said both on both sides of this superior sagittal sinus, we have the venous lacunae, which are these this spaces on both sides, which sometimes permit the drainage of certain uh, superior sagittal groups of bridging veins, which pass through this lacunae before reaching the, the superior sagittal sinus and love of the midline. So next we have the inferior sagittal sinus, which occupies the posterior two thirds of the free inferior border of the Fox cerebri. So here is our Fox cerebri, this part of the, the dura mater here, and then the, inf the posterior, the two thirds of the posterior the posterior to third of the inferior part of the Fox cerebri here, we find the inferior sagittal sinus. So its largest tributaries or branches are the pericalosal veins, which are not uh, represented here. And it ends by joining the great cerebral vein to, to form, I don't know what my cursor is doing. So here, by joining with the great cerebral vein, it will form the straight sinus, as it's represented here. So we have the straight sinus in itself, which is formed by the association of the inferior sagittal sinus and the great cerebral vein. It is attached to the tentorium cerebra, cerebelli, and it most commonly drains at the level of the left transverse sinus, with opposition to the superior sagittal sinus, which drains at the right, while the straight sinus drains mostly at the left. We have the transverse sinus, which causes laterally from the torcular herophily in the border of the tentum cerebrali. We have right, we have two transverse sinuses. We have the right transverse sinus and the left transverse sinus. And then we have the tentorial sinuses, which we'll see here, which divide into, which run at the level of the tentorium cerebelli and which divide into a medial group, which drain into the transverse sinus, transverse sinus right here, and lateral group which drain into the straight sinus and lateral sinus still. And then we have the cavernous sinus, this sinus, which is located on each side of the cella tussica and the body of the sphenoid bone, it receives blood from the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins, those veins that drain the, 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 the eye portion, and then the superficial medial cerebral veins in the lateral fissure of the cerebral hemispheres. So talking about this cavernous sinus, it's really very important because this structure has very important uh, nervous relationships as well as vascular relationships. As we can see here, we have we have the internal carotid artery. We have oculomotor, the third oculomotor nerve associated with the trochial trochial nerve here, the branch of the trochial nerve, and all of these structures cause into the cavernous sinus, as well as it is related to the pituitary gland, as we can see here. So it's relevant because in cavernous sinus tumors or in lesions that uh, 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 interest the cavernous sinus, care has to be taken in, during the resection of these lesions not to injure these associated nervous tissues or the, the vascular tissues, the, the internal carotid artery. So this cavernous sinus communicates with the junction between the transverse and the sigmoid sinus through the superior petrosal vein, the superior petrosal sinus, and then the sigmoid sinus through the inferior petrosal sinus. So we have 
the superior petrosal sinus, which you can see right here, which causes within the attachment of the tentorium to the petrosal ridge and connects medially to the posterior end of the cavernous sinus and laterally to the junction of the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus right here. And then we have the group of deep veins. So after talking about these superficial veins which drain the cortical part, we have the deep veins, which are those concerned with the drainage of the central structures of the hemisphere, not, not the central structures of the hemisphere, the basal ganglia, the corpus callosum, the pineal region, the limbic system, and the thalamus. So these deep veins are organized into a venous system which is mainly drained by the internal cerebral vein and the basal vein of Rosenthal. Going further, we, these deep veins are divided into two groups. We have the ventricular group. This ventricular group, which is composed of veins draining the lateral wall of the ventricles. And then we have the cisternal group, which is composed of veins draining the walls of the basal cisterns. So talking about this ventricular group, actually it is made up of two portions. We have the lateral atrial contribution. So here we are at the level of the body of the lateral ventricles. We are seeing the branches of these deep veins that cause at the level of the lateral wall concerning the ventricular group that cause of the level of the lateral wall of the body of the, the lateral ventricles. And then this ventricular group is divided further into two subgroups. We have the lateral atrial contributions and the medial ventricular contributions, which are these venous structures at the medial surface and the medial surface of the of the, the, the body of the lateral ventricle. So the lateral atrial contributions drain the caudate nucleus here. We have the caudate nucleus and the thalamus here. While the medial ventricular group drains the basal vein of Rosenthal. So which we will not see here. It drains the basal vein of Rosenthal and it passes through the outer and fornicial circumference of the choroidal fissure. So here we have the choroidal fissure. We have the medial part of this ventricular group that passes through the, the, the frontal, the fornicial, sorry, circumference of the choroidal fissure. Here we have the fornices on this side, the thalamus, and then the caudate nucleus, which are the structures, parts of the, the thalamus, the caudate nucleus, which are parts of the basal ganglia that are drained by this lateral and medial group of the ventricular group of deep veins. Here we have another image that depicts the body of the lateral ventricle, which is as it is observed from posteriorly to the occipital lobe. Here we have the body of the lateral ventricle. And here we are looking at the part of the atrium here. Here we have the, chor the, the choroidal fissure with the, with the vessels. Here we have the portion of the ventricular uh, uh, cavity that goes into the temporal lobe. And here we see the lateral group, the lateral part of this ventricular uh, uh, group, and then we have the, the medial part here. So among these lateral uh, uh, vessels, we have the lateral atrial vessels. As we said, the ventricular group is divided into the lateral atrial contributions and medial contributions. So here we have the lateral atrial vein, is part of this lateral, lateral atrial contributions. Here again, we are seeing a portion of the, the ventricular cavity from the anterior inferior uh, part of the temporal lobe, so from the temporal horn. And here we are seeing the lateral vessels and then the medial vessels here, which contribute to this ventricular group of deep veins. And then we have the cisternal group. These cisternal groups drain the area beginning interiorly in front of the third ventricle. So here we don't have exactly the third ventricle, but here we have the floor of the third ventricle. So we have the inferior portion of the third ventricle. And then extend laterally to the sylvian fissure on both sides. 
Sylvian Fisher, and they go backward to include the walls of the chiasmatic, interpeduncular, crural, ambient, and quadrigeminal systems. So among these venous structures, we have the, the basal veins here. We have the deep sylvian vein, the superior sylvian vein, which are those structures that are, uh, take part in this cisternal group and contribute to the drainage of the deep veins. This, here we have a, 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 an image that depicts part of the veins at the level of the, the cerebellum. We have the calca alvis. The, here we have the temporal lobe cut, the, the, a, a cut of the temporal lobe. We have the cerebellum right here. And then we have these venous structures, the internal cerebral vein, which is part of those main structures that drain the, 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 the whole of the, the deep venous system. We have the thalamostriate vein right here. And we have the vein of Galen. So as we said, this deep venous system is drained mainly by the internal cerebral vein, which we have here. We have the basal vein of Rosenthal, and we have the great veins, and we have the vein of Galen. So why then do we study these uh, venous structures? Actually, uh, most of the, 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 the pathological situations that occur concerning this venous system include either traumatic injury to this venous system or venous aneurysms, for example. So here we have an image that depicts the superior sagittal sinus. We have the cortical veins here, which drain into the superior sagittal sinus through the bridging veins. And then what's important is that in cases of, of uh, um, cerebral venous thrombosis, we'll have a patient, mostly a woman, that will present with signs of increased intracranial pressure. And then at the level of the, the CT scan, we'll observe this pathognomonic sign, which is the delta sign, which are both signs that orientate to this uh, uh, deep venous thrombosis at the level of the, 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 the brain. So in cases of these pathologies, intervention at the level of this uh, uh, deep venous system, we we'll take into consideration the venous vascularization, we we'll take into consideration these cortical veins, these superior sagittal veins, as well as these veins at the level of the, 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 the deep veins which drain the ventricular portion and then the, 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 the straight sinus and go to the, the internal cerebral vein and the, the, the basal vein of Rosenthal. So, Talking about the surgical relevance, here we focus mostly on the, the traumatic injury to the, the superior sagittal sinus because as we know, despite the, the precautions taken during surgical procedures, injury to this sinus is, is not something uncommon. So in cases of injuries to this sinus, in, during, uh, amongst the preventive measures that have to be taken, in case of this uh, injury to this uh, uh, sagittal sinuses, the surgeon in the procedure has to avoid performing craniotomy 1.5 centimeter too close to the midline because we know that at the level of this midline, we have the superior sagittal sinus that causes. And then during this crani craniotomy procedure, in case of traumatic brain injury, we can injure this superior sagittal sinus. And if ever it happened to be that it is important for the surgical procedure to be performed at the level of the midline, it is recommended that this sagittal sinus present just below the, 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 the bone of the skull has to be separated gently from this, uh, from this bone before the, the, during the craniotomy procedure in order to avoid any lesion to the, 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 the superior sagittal sinus or the concerned sinus. So here we are seeing an image of surgical repair at the level of the superior sagittal sinus. So it includes uh, 
we have the meninges, the flaps of the meninges that are used for the surgical repair in case of injury when it occurs during a surgical procedure. A surgical procedure. It has to be noted too that the venous structures during surgical procedures, precisely the internal cerebral vein, the basal vein of Rosenthal, are structures being main draining structures have to be protected during the surgical procedures and as surgical lesions to these venous structures have to be avoided as, most, as, as much as possible. Here we have an image that depicts a surgical procedure in front of the lesion to the anterior segment of the sagittal sinus. So we see that it can be tied off using a, a, a 206 suture corresponding to the length of the sinus. And uh, this permits management of this uh, 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 sagittal sinus tear. Moreover, during these surgical procedures, in case we have a lesion of the superior sagittal sinus, care has to be taken not to expose excessively the superior the, the sagittal sinus as we know that this vas, this uh, sinuses are intimately linked to the bony structures just above and the 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 the, the, the sub the cortical structures just below so excessive maneuvers to expose this superior sagittal sinus can be associated with increased bleeding so it's recommended to be calm in these surgical procedures and uh, for, for proper management here we we have an image that depicts Injury to the the torula herophily that 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 structure that's a confluence at the level of the the, the occipital uh, prominence, and then in case of these lesions to the to the to the torula herophily, we can we use generally neurosurgeons use a, a muscle graft for example sutures at this level to prevent the bleeding as we know that this. Torula herophily is one of the venous structures that has to be protected during the surgical procedure as it is a confluence of many venous structures, notably the superior sagittal sinus, the trans, the, the both right and left uh, transverse sinuses. So thank you for your kind attention. First of all, um, we're going to have uh, the different newcomers present themselves, please. Um, Dr. Kabulo, can you please present yourself? Dr. Kabulo? Yes. <laughs> Sorry? Please, Dr. Kabulo, can you present yourself, please? Thank you. Uh, my name is Kabulo uh, from Congo. I'm final year neurosurgery residence at the University of Zimbabwe. Thank you very much, Dr. Kabulo. Uh, You're please, um, Charles Oliveira, can you present yourself, please? Hello, Charles. Um, sorry. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead with Dr. Nuru. Dr. Nuru, can you present yourself, please? Hi, uh, Ulrich. Uh, good, uh, good evening, uh, everybody. I am Dr. Nuru Bankal. Uh, I am a resident here in Morocco in the Fitness uh, Rabba Center. And uh, thank you, uh, Dylan, for your brilliant uh, presentation. <laughs> Very much, Dr. Nuru. Uh, Franklin, can you present yourself, please? Litino, if you hear us, can you present yourself? Hmm. Unfortunately. Yan Kana. Yan, are you there, Yan? Please present yes. yourself. Uh, I'm ready. Yes, I'm a young Kana. I'm an American student for Cameroon. Okay, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, uh, Dr. Tan Ming, Bak Tanka. Dr. Tan Ming. 
Okay, no worries. Um, I know it's, it's tough sometimes. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Oh, we have him. Hello, Dr. Yeah. Actually, my microphone was muted. That's why I could not speak. Hello. Is that you, Tan May? Yeah, I'm here, John. Oh, I... Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm myself, Tan May. I'm from India. I'm final year neurosurgery PG. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Sydney, are you there? Well, you may have had a technical issue. Um, okay, uh, Marco, uh, is it important to know the venous system, anatomy, neuroanatomy, and why? Uh, absolutely, is a very important uh, uh, because. Uh, uh, First of all, uh, the uh, the importance of uh, uh, venous sinus uh, is uh, uh, mandatory in uh, neurosurgery. Uh, but when you perform a, a procedure like uh, um, a, 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 like a, a interhemispheric approach, uh, and uh, a, I, I appreciate a lot uh, the importance uh, that. Uh, a, they give to the uh, 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 to the uh, sinus uh, wound and uh, how they can be uh, approached. So, because it is the uh, the more dramatic uh, experience for uh, a residence at the first step when uh, the superior sagittal break and you have a uh, impressive bleeding, but you need to to uh, just keep calm and perform the procedures like they show it. So, uh, uh, so um, uh, turn the, the dura mater, uh, take a, a piece of uh, tabotam, uh, surgical or muscle, and uh, suture. And this uh, allows you to control in a, a very uh, efficacious manner the blading. So I appreciate a lot the importance to uh, how to uh, to, pr to prevent, first of all, but then how can you repair the, uh, the sinus breakage? So um, absolutely my, my, my congratulations. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kubulo, do you have any remarks on the venous system? And, uh, and welcome. How you been? Let me unmute you there, Dr. Kubulo. Are you there? Maybe I hit him on a break. Okay. Hi, hi, John. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nero. How you doing? Go ahead. I'm fine. I'm fine. And Go you, ahead. I, I saw that uh, you, <laughs> you have good. Uh, you, you are a good teacher, Ulrich. Uh, make, uh, <laughs> make your job. <laughs> well, you know how it is in medicine. You just nice. push them up. You push them up on the. I went to a <laughs> conference in uh, Nepal. Dr. Cato just pushed me on the stage to make a speech. I didn't know. I, I she just said, "Go." No, it's good. It is good things, and it's uh, a good way to do it. You, you have done great, great job, and thank you. And I, I want to thank uh, Ulrich. Uh, I want to thank uh, our nice uh, uh, medical student, uh, student who aspire, uh, who have uh, this uh, motivation to do neurosurgery. Uh, uh, I congratulate them, and um, it is important to start uh, this lecture about neuroanatomy. And uh, today, this presentation um, is very Please, can you put so back? Excuse me, Dr. Nuru. Dr. Nuru, please excuse me. Can you put yes. back? John, please, can you put back Eric onto the panelists? Please. Oh, I'm sorry. What's going on? Ah, okay. Eric, uh, Eric, uh, Eric oh, please. Okay, over to me. There he goes. Please, please put a European panel. Okay. Um, okay. It is. Okay. It is good, John. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doctor Nero. Okay. So, uh, uh, I was talking about this nice presentation. It is very nice, and I congratulate uh, Dylan for for this presentation. And it is uh, important to know that. Uh, 
uh, sinus uh, venous system, it is uh, like uh, I was told when I, I perform uh, neuroanatomy lecture about sulfonate bone, it is a um, land, great, great landmark for neurosurgeon. Great landmark. And uh, uh, always we have to have in your mind when you go into operator room and you have CT scan or MRI, you have before to start your surgery to keep in your, in your mind uh, where I am going. Because anatomy it is like a way. If you know well your anatomy, you have the way to perform your surgery. And it is important to, to, to know the key point uh, and um, the area you have to be careful and uh, when uh, you have to, to, uh, to, to, to fight against bleeding uh, when you perform your surgery, you have to know how you have to, to, to fight against bleeding because bleeding of uh, sinus, uh, if you don't keep calm like uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Meloni said, uh, you can lose your patient on the table and uh, he will die. So you have, to, you have to be careful about sinus vein when you, we are we, we done our craniectomy or craniotomy. Um, you have to, I remember uh, when I was in first years uh, of my uh, residence and I have, um, a depressed uh, school uh, um, uh, and I have to perform uh, uh, this case and this depressed school it is front it is in on uh, sinus sagittal superior and I have to don to done uh, uh, <laughs> to, 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 to operate this case and I remember before I start my professor who uh, who uh, who is my uh, my senior of, uh, of shift tell me please uh, come in my, in my office, take paper and show me how I have to manage this case. And it was a great experience for me. And uh, all our approach, you have to know that in all cases, our, our landmark of a craniectomy, uh, but our approach, it is the sinus. When you take fossa cerebral, fossa, uh, fossa cerebral posterior, when you want to do an uh, uh, approach of uh, fossa cerebral, know that, our sinus, uh, uh, transverse sinus, it is uh, laterally and the middle uh, sinus it is our landmark. We don't have to go in up, so you have landmark. When you have to perform a retrosigmoid approach in uh, uh, to remove a, a tumor, uh, uh, APC tumor or like uh, 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 schwannoma vestibular, you know that you have to do, done, uh, to be careful about lateral uh, sinus. So, interminiferous approach, we know that how to do uh, attention but uh, uh, sinus sagittal superior and know how to, 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 um, to, done, to perform canalization. All this, it is important to know and, planif and uh, planify that before to going to operate room. Like that, you will not be surprised when you will be on, uh, on table and uh, you are so focused and you will see bleeding of sinus and uh, you will, you will uh, maybe you will put your, I don't know, <laughs> secret adrenaline and uh, <laughs> want to go away. So it is very important uh, to, to, to know all this landmark, where is my sinus uh, come from, where it is going, and it is important to know um, about syndrome like uh, sinus uh, cavernous syndrome before traumatic uh, case. It is all this is important, but I think that uh, we will go um, we will go ahead uh, uh, step by step uh, before all this lecture about neuroanatomy, like I was told with Ulrich. We will go in step by step and to show more um, with more data because. Uh, all this lecture, it is to keep uh, up, um, to dance uh, like summary about the, the topic and after we'll go in uh, step by step in more details about clinical, about uh, approach, all this we will do that uh, step by step. So thank you all to come and uh, nice to meet you and uh, we, have to keep, we have to keep it going on more than that. And thank you, John. Thank you, Ulrich. Thank you, Marco. Thank you all to come to support, uh, to support uh, our, uh, to support your young uh, and your future uh, colleagues in neurosurgery. So thank you very much. Yeah. I'd like to get remarks from Dr. Kabulu because um, Dr. Kabulu is uh, 
he's a senior I, I i really i really appreciate i know him for for a while and he's very diligent on these things so but the Kabulu, please what did you what did you notice um, in this presentation <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh thank you arnold that was a great presentation <clears throat> unfortunately i came dylan, actually. Yeah. sorry dylan not arnold dylan. dylan is on arnold's um laptop it's dylan that presented oh okay <laughs> yeah so dylan congratulations that was a great presentation i unfortunately i came a bit late um and at some point i i had to to, to, to leave so i didn't follow everything but it was great um venous drainage is important very very important uh, when you are talking about the uh, superior sagittal sinus it's uh, it's it's like a cobra uh, like a big snake when you are operating in neurosurgery but uh, the only part you can play with is the anterior third of the uh, superior sagittal sinus that one you can even like get it if there is a need to do it you can like get it but middle third, posterior third, if you try to like get that one, you, you leave theater with the brain behind you. So I think I uh, don't have many comments. So thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, yeah, it was great. Well, um, th th thank you, uh, Dr. Kabulu, and thank you on behalf of, of Dylan. Um, my, my, my own uh, comments, I would say, um, I'm very pleased to, to first of all see this many people attending this session, um, uh, especially given that we have a lot of um, students and future neurosurgeons. Um, I know that you will become future neurosurgeons and we have a lot of um, great um, uh, seniors here. And thank you to John for, for helping us out. This lecture was particularly interesting because I always remember one of the very first lecture courses I followed on neurosurgical TV where it was held by Professor Ibrahim Spey. I think he's going to be picking up when he'll, be, he'll have some time. And Professor Ibrahim Spey, if you follow his lectures, every time he has a lecture, he always says this, you cannot only learn arteries, you equally have to learn veins. So I think the objective today was, um, well, well, was well, I think. Thank you very much, Dylan. Um, uh, obviously, we, Over, we, we, can I say something? Yes, go ahead, John. Yeah, I just have one remark. I'm not a neurosurgeon, but uh, we, were, we were discussing, uh, Marco and I were discussing the importance of the venous system and the importance of taking approach to an operation. He said it's so important to make a good approach. Now, these, this is something I didn't know. I'm not a neurosurgeon. Uh, can you remark on that, uh, Dr. Cabullo, and, and uh, uh, the importance of the approach and knowing the neuroanatomy? Are you there, Marco, still? Marco may have stepped away. Let's see. Is Marco still here? No, he's not. Marco, are you still there? So, John, he, may, he may have stepped away. I'm sorry. So for your question, your question, I think Dr. Nuru already covered um, a good part of this, speaking about uh, different approaches in relationship to the different sinuses. Because ba basically, the, 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 the sinus are, are, are these venous spaces in the dura, within the dura. So he spoke, Dr. Nuru, for example, spoke about if you have an intervention on the posterior fossa, posterior fossa then you have to, you have to be uh, weary about um, the, 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 the transverse sinus. Same thing goes for a very, something that looks a really simple procedure, like uh, placing an external ventricular drain. If you have to do that, then you have to be very careful where you place your, where you place your, your, your bell hole. So um, they, they did cover that. Um, uh, okay. The, 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 Are you chastising me? No, no, no. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, it's not, it's not my lack of training. It's I'm the wasn't listening. <laughs> uh, hello, um, hello. Yes, Doctor Nuru, we hear you. Ah, uh, okay. So, John, you didn't uh, follow me when I was talking about uh, the importance uh, of um, sinus dry, uh, vein. Uh, I, I think that I talk about the correlation in approach, uh, in neurosurgical approach. Okay. It is very important to know this, all these landmarks because when we perform uh, approach, uh, uh, you have to know your landmark about your, your, key, uh, your, your key hole, your, your key point, uh, where, you want to, where, where you have to done um, your burr hole. 
So, uh, about, uh, like I was telling you, about uh, cheval noma vestibular, you know that you have to take care about uh, sin uh, sinus, lateral sinus. It is uh, our, uh, our landmark. You don't go, you have, you don't go, uh, we, we don't have to go um, to, to, to going up uh, lateral sinus. So, it is our landmark in, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, surgery of uh, uh, fossa cerebral posterior. We know that uh, we don't ha we don't have to go uh, up to the uh, middle uh, sinus and laterally uh, transverse sinus. It is our um, landmark and a but uh, uh, hemispheric uh, approach. Uh, anti hemispheric approach. You have to be careful about sinus uh, sagittal superior and don't do the, 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 uh, the burr hole in the middle line, but you have to do that uh, three centimeter uh, lateral part of, of, of sinus uh, sagittal uh, superior. In the example, when, uh, like I, I will take a simple example of to Ulrich, when you have to do, you, you, you have to do, to perform like a, a shunt, external shunt, you know that you have to be careful and be three centimeter lateral part of your uh, sinus uh, super, uh, superior sagittal. And uh, you have to repair your coronal and be three centimeter on. So all these landmarks uh, uh, help us to perform our surgery safe, safely. And you have to know sometimes you will be uh, fight against bleeding because you, are, you, are not, uh, you have not choice. So when in this case you don't have choice and you have bleeding of sinus, you have to perform canalization. You have to done something. You have to done your hemostasis. If you don't do anything, you will lose your patient on the table. Your patient will be that will be die. So you have to know how to perform canalization and have to uh, how to perform hemost uh, to, to perform hemostasis of your of bleeding to stop this bleeding. So it is important and to to know all this. And uh, I think uh, Dylan uh, show. Um, uh, with more detail, uh, this uh, beautiful anatomy of uh, of, of uh, uh, superficial vein and uh, deep vein. So, I I know that about deep vein, uh, you have to be careful to 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 don't touch it. Uh, it is my opinion, don't touch it because if you touch it, it is not easy to done hemostasis, and uh, after you can have. Uh, hematoma in post-operatory, more complications. So uh, like uh, sinus cavernous, please um, don't touch it, let him. Sinus superior, uh, su uh, sinus superior uh, sagittal, uh, we, you can manage it, you can manage it. It is not uh, like uh, deep vein, uh, uh, it's not easy. So please um, be careful and uh, always before to going to perform uh, surgery, Planify where you are going in your head, in your mind, to know, yes, I'm going there, I will do like that. And if you know correctly your anatomy, it is your way. You will perform your surgery nicely. So anatomy, it is the way to perform good surgery and uh, uh, keep it, keep it uh, in our mind. So thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nuru. I think on that note, we can go off air and uh, we will meet probably next, next week unless someone else had something to say, but um, I think everything has been covered. Next week, we'll be having a lecture on the, uh, the medulla oblongata, uh, helped by Dylan once more. Okay. Yeah, and, so, and, thank Dr. You very much. and Victor Hugo Perez Perez may be here next week, uh, Ulrich. That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Okay, I'll try to get him. Good. Okay. Good. Yes, Dylan. Yes, I was. I was saying uh, concerning the the posterior uh, uh, vascular structures. What we're talking we'll about. We will reschedule it. We will reschedule it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank thanks. you.